Well, I'm joined by Chris Thomas, and uh, while we were doing our thing on the uh, last year and, and, and the coming, there were so many other things that you did, and, and weirdly, this will go out probably before your other interview, but it's worth, worth staying tuned to. But let's deal with the things outside of what we dealt with there, but inclusive in the sense of you, you brought up lots of things. But before we start even more, we had uh, Eric Corkish. Uh, I did him about him and his disability scooter going on the buses. The dispute seems to continue. Mm -hmm. Your name was brought up, your supporter. So I'd, I'm trying to get some more ideas of what's going on. And if you haven't seen Eric Corkish's interview, basically he was allowed on the bus with his class two mm -hmm. for a while for a test. And it was only a test. The test finished. And then it didn't continue, and he, there was some complaints about him bringing it on. Mm -hmm. Over to you, what are you helping on? I've within? agreed to go to the tribunal as McKinsey friend, so I'll basically sit there and support him through it. Um, I, I'll also support him in the sense that uh, I'm a firm believer in the information being out there, and I will use my position as a public representative in the House of Keys to make sure that the situation is clear in terms of the equality It sounds law. odd to me, doesn't it? It does. So I've, I first, uh, he phoned in, uh, Mr. Corkish phoned in to the Andy Wint show on Manx Radio, I think about December, January time, and um, basically I promised then that within three months we'd have made progress. I tried really hard. As it happens, so did Jane Paul Wilson, and the law does need to be changed. Everything that Eric Corkish said more or less was correct, and I'm pleased to support him um, to make sure that we get the, uh, the right application of the Equality Act principles in public transport and in other types of transport, which is, we're not quite there as yet. Um, and secondly, I'm prepared to go along and support him in the sense of uh, be sitting next to him in, and mm. um, helping him um, through and his, in, during his tribunal if we get to that stage. But hopefully, there can be a resolution beforehand. So, it doesn't need any change of law? So it, does, it does need a change of law. It will need a change, change of law. law. So, over the summer, I've asked questions to cloak quite sheer, clearly that the law needs change. But, right. but um, Eric was correct, which is that across um, many, many companies do provide type 2 dis um, mobility scooter access to buses and they use that, yeah. th they do that using a code. You end up going to Timwell Hill, you know this, don't you? As I said, I mean, his mobility scooter going up on, mm -hmm. on Timwell Day yeah, to, and he's to right. deliver his grievance. I, I don't think there's anybody in the, the Cabinet Office equality team who wouldn't agree that um, his case needs to be sorted. Um, mm -hmm. It's a question. It's not personal, though, doesn't you think it's got. It's it's a, it, it, it's it, has, it has got personal between, it seems, between Bus Vanin and Mr. Corkish. But yeah. the most important thing is there's more people that, than just Mr. Mm. Corkish. Yeah. And Public Transport and the Equality Act are there for a purpose, and we need to have them there for the right it's purpose. Got, it's got all the signs of blowing into one of the stories that the UK press will sees on as well, which, you know. Anyway. Yeah. Okay, that was an ongoing one. In our interview, which y you may have not yet seen, is about Max Gas. Mm -hmm. And we're running this on the, on the basis only that you got your order paper in right mm -hmm. so tell us what you what's happening where are we up to because i mean i I've done Mr. Murphy so many times and we mm -hmm. keep getting almost to the, what we think is something happening and then it hasn't. So mm -hmm. what's the latest? Mr. Murphy and his team fully understand the situation to do with how Manx Utilities relates to Manx Gas, what the future looks like for space heating and the use of gas in the Isle of Man. They've got a really good understanding about how to look after consumers because consumers care about the quality of service and the price of the service and you, we do pay more for, for gas in the Isle of Man because of uh, the costs that are charged to Manx Gas and gas consumers from Manx Utilities and from Treasury. Mr Murphy's got a very good understanding. I have too. Um, my interest in, in gas goes back seven or eight years. I went to the Office of Fair Trading to try and sort it by bringing in a concept called economic regulation, which goes alongside competition regulation. I'll explain that in a moment. I resigned from the uh, Office of Fair Trading in, ja in uh, January 2015 um, because of the bad 2015 gas regulatory agreement and I moved in June that we should move over to um, imposed regulation through through law and I believe that the uh, negotiations have which is what they became called through the summer rather than voluntary they became they became called negotiations I believe they've gone on they've been enlightening they've been helpful and I hate to even say this because I'm not a narcissistic public representative but perhaps Chris was right and we now need to move over to a statutory regulation form we'll need to amend the gas regulation act and we'll need to sort out gas and I think electricity and many other utilities. Chris, 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 Chris Thomas. You Chris Thomas. Oh, right. Chris, Chris Roberts. You're talking yourself in the third party. Thought, well, okay. <laughs> but we'll come to Chris uh, Roberts. I'm sorry to do that that's but right, uh, yeah. that's because I'm not a narcissist so <laughs> even when I talk about myself I okay. like to think that, uh, no, but, so, so you were right basically but you you were the one that handled these 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 just a whole thing weren't they at one stage i mean exactly. the negotiations exactly and we couldn't uh, you know things are very simple 
with somebody like the Chief Minister if he shouts that he wants the return on capital employed to be lower than 9.99%, 9, 9, 9, 9 it'll be lower and that's it sorted. You can't sort out the gas price without sorting out economic regulation, uh, you which is what, how the, you regulate when competition can't apply, uh, how, when you have a natural monopoly, and that's something that I tried to do in government for four years by setting up a work stream of introducing economic regulation alongside better competition regulation. I put in place a regulatory review process which completed its work in December 2019 and that, pro and that report okay. has been okay. suppressed. Right. That suppressed. report hasn't been published and I've asked questions about suppressed. that. So the, so the evidence is there that it's not going to be published because Council Ministers described it as work in progress. So we now need to move very quickly to a system of economic regulation for gas and also for the other utilities and various other things like transport around it. And the most important thing is it's very hard to sort out the gas problem because gas is different from telecoms, say, because gas, now it's quite clear, has a lifespan. We're not sure whether it's five years, 10 years, 15 years, even 30 years, but because of climate change and the accepted science on climate change, we will be moving away from yeah, no boilers fuels. or nothing would be put in. Uh, and, and you can't sort out gas regulation and gas pricing without taking confidence of that. I think right. there was a naivety from, from um, perhaps a naivety, I hate to do this because we'll end up having a some sort of Twitter war from, from Mr Hooper and from Mr Harmer about how easy it was to solve. And I regret that Mr Hooper and Mr Harmer and Dr Allenson came in and joined in with a sort of mockery of Chris Thomas that you were in charge and you didn't get it sorted and now you're teasing us. The reality, it's a difficult issue and I'm very pleased to walk, walk to work with and walk with the brains of Laurie Hooper, Minister Harmer uh, Dr. Allenson to, 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 to solve this in the next Just few be clear, months. There was no solution yet to the Manx gas situation. There's, there's, a, there's a statement, a on statement. Tim, a statement from, um, from the um, Minister of Policy and Reform on where we are in terms of planning for the gas. So therefore we'll be going back to Plan B, which was Chris Thomas's Plan A, okay. which was the, uh, the, the statutory right. route for, for, okay. for, 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 for gas regulation. We'll be talking to Mr Murphy, no doubt, after this as well. Um, and he'll explain it much more clearly than me, because um, you know, full credit to Mr Murphy, not only is he organised a working group, he's actually very balanced and very clear when he, he presents things. But we'd also like to hear from Max Gas. I mean, You've got a new man in charge, and I don't think he's been put up for an interview yet, so not to me anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Chris Robert Shaw mm -hmm. gave you mentions you know, in his thing. I, I don't know, what was yeah. that all about? You so basically, Chris is a, an advocate of what has been called single Silo. legal entity. But when he went to the um, when he went to the the Legion for the pos Positive Action Group, he um, he conceded that that pub one public service was a better way of thinking about it than single legal entity. And one public service is a concept that I came up with as, in my time in government, and it is actually in the government action plan, and it is still being implemented. And what that means is we have a thousand or so people who work really closely together, doing policy development, doing law, doing all the things that centre government has to do, like employing public servants, like planning the use of the finances. So we have a thousand real people who are in one public service and they're all joined up. And then we have professionally managed and professionally governed operating entities underneath them that share services and don't don't you know don't don't work against each other, work together, but under a coordinated one public service plan. So we've seen that already recommended in health with Manx Care. We've now seen it recommended in uh, education um, with an education board. Chris Robertshaw and, and myself are aligned with the fact that we now need to dismantle the dysfunctional Department of Infrastructure and put together a professionally managed ports organisation and, and, and bus van in. We're so integrated that we need to change uh, enterprise. Home Affairs was already on the table three years ago, but as Chris Robertshaw mentioned, the Chief Minister doesn't like change and the plan that was there two and a half, three years ago for home affairs and, and, carve, and, and going that hasn't been implemented over two and a half years and that's disappointing for uh, both of us. Are you two going to be the opposition basically, aren't you? The, us two, uh, Chris and myself, are going to work together in the next years alongside people like, and I hate to implicate other people in that terrible duo, but you know, I believe that the other members of the single legal entity committee that became the One Public Service Committee are also you know, big fans of this, big advocates of this. So that will be Claire Barber and Daphne Kane. And the only one who was against it in our committee was Minister Boot. And you know, I'm sure that, that sort of position I was taking um, regarding one public service and regarding economic regulation was instrumental in my demise. Planning, you know, was the actual cause of it, but um, I'm, a, I'm a firmer believer in my policies. I think other politicians are 
believe more in themselves and the fact that they want to be a minister and so on. To me, I'm a principled public representative and what absolutely matters is doing the right thing by the community and the people of the island in the long-term interests of all of us in the island.